everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS for the Gigabyte Z87X UD3H motherboard. As you can see, this is a new Dual BIOS. They no longer have the 3D BIOS like they had before. So right now we're in the dashboard mode and before I go any further let me just say that it's been raining here for four days so if you hear some thunder and lightning I'm sorry uh, I've also shut off my air conditioner do live in Florida so that's why a lot of times you hear the whooshing in the background so even though I might try to edit it out of the video that's why we hear that so in any case without further ado other than the CPU fan there should be no other background noise here let's go ahead and take a look at the top left hand side we see the gigabyte sign, uh, the gigabyte logo, UEFI dual BIOS. Scrolling over to the right we have the time and the date. Now when we go into the main window of course from the top we have our voltage settings. This basically shows you the voltage of your DRAM and your CPU core. Then next to that is our CPU fan speed and of course our temperatures. Temperature will show you CPU and system temp. Going to the far left, we have CPU status. Gives you your CPU core frequency ratio, CPU VRN, your CPU temperature, your memory status, what your channel memories are, what your timings are set to for your memory. So now we'll go to the far right and we'll take a look at system status. System status basically shows you your host clock your rails voltages, your 3.3 volt rails for your power supply, your 5 volt, 12 volt, system temp, PCH temp, and it also shows you your system fan speeds. Going to the top, we have multiple tabs. We have a home tab, a performance tab, system information, BIOS features, peripherals, power management, of course, save and exit. Down below that, we have performance tab, standard, your name, your name, your name, and your name. Basically, I'll tell you what they're about in a second. Now, under the performance tab, you can see you just have your regular base clock settings, etc. So we'll get to that, but let's go ahead under favorites here, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this. If I can get my mouse to get untangled, all right, that might be a little bit better for me. All right, under favorites here, you'll see you have different shortcuts. Of course you have save and exit, load a profile, save a profile, performance frequency. If you click on that it's going to take you to the performance tab, go to the frequency and bring that back. So let's go ahead back to the home screen. Of course peripherals, same thing. It'll bring you to peripherals. And then we have load default resolution toggle. Of course you have two different resolutions here that you could use. We'll go ahead and use the HD resolution. Hopefully that'll be better. Hopefully we get a good recording here. And then we have classic setup. Classic setup, as it says, it's UEFI dual BIOS. Classic setup is a setup in the BIOS that maybe a lot of you are very familiar with because it's the old classic setup with the MIT tweaker and all that different stuff that Gigabyte had. It has all the same features in there, it's just a more familiar setup. So let's go ahead and just look at the performance section here real quick under the home tab. So we have the base clock, we have the host clock, we have our system memory multiplier, your CPU V core. These are just quick options that you could grab in a performance. Now, we saw these profiles and we saw these your names tabs. If we click on setup here, basically what we could do is we could set any tab or we could create a tab, which hence the your, your name, and we could put any one of these options up there to make that first tab or whatever tab you want have everything that you need or you might want. Again, this is on default settings, so this is how Gigabyte has it set up. You can change this. You All you have to do is label it, set it to what you want it to be, save it, and you could have this first screen under performance have basically anything that you want to. Now, if we go ahead and we click to standard, of course your standard is going to be your initial display output, your processor graphics, integrated 
SATA controller, SATA mode selection, and of course, again, select your own options. Make this tab whatever you want it to be or whatever you want to have on it. Or you could create your own tabs under the your, your tab. Got your setup here. It's exactly what I showed you before. And you name it and save it. So we'll go back to performance and we'll look again under performance here. As I said, this is just a basic quick reference for the different items that you might be using like your base clock and your CPU voltage and stuff like that. Now, basically you have two options. You could click on it and go from auto to whatever you want on your, uh, on your base clock frequency or you can use the slider bar and that will adjust you. So we'll go ahead and go back to auto. Now, if you want to go real time, click the switch. This will set it real time to whatever you set it to so you can actually test inside the BIOS your overclock. Again, everything else is either drop down or slider. If you see a switch here and you turn it on, it'll give you real time automatic without having to reset the BIOS. Let's move on to the performance section. Under performance, we have multiple tabs. We have a frequency, a memory, a voltage, a PC health status, and miscellaneous. Under frequency tab, under the pre frequency tab and performance, we have a performance upgrade. This will allow you to auto-tune your system by a percentage, 20, 30, 40, 50, well, 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 percent, I'm sorry. But in any case, you could go ahead and, and adjust your performance that way. Of course, this is going to be based on your CPU, whatever your CPU could do. The same thing under advanced CPU core settings. As you can see, we have different, set, different settings here. You have a KOC, which I'm still trying to figure out what it is. As soon as I find out, I'll annotate this video and tell you, but I'm assuming that it is an overclocking uh, utility to help you, <coughs> excuse me, to further uh, performance tune your, your system. Now, under the advanced CPU core, of course, this is where you could set your CPU PLL selections, your filters, your uncore ratio, your turbo boost technology. You could set your turbo ratios here for your cores. You could set your C states, enable hyperthreading, disable hyperthreading, how many cores you want enabled. You could you shut down cores, etc. Let's go ahead back. And as you can see, we also down here have the Extreme Memory Profile, XMP. If we go ahead and click on Profile 1, it'll change it to what your memory is. And right now, I'm using 2400 megahertz memory by Corsair. It's the Vengeance Pro that just came out for Haswell. Let's go over to Memory. Extreme Memory Profile, as you can see, I set it in that screen. It's already set. You could go to memory overclocking profiles and basically Gigabyte has went and found some overclocking profiles that manufacturers have uh, have went ahead and sent them and by if you have this specific memory you could go ahead and set an overclocking profile in there. System memory multiplier, memory frequency, memory enhancement settings I have it set to normal you could do to enhance performance or stability. <coughs> Uh, memory mode timing I have set to auto. You can say, set that to advanced or manual. Channel interleaving is auto. Rank interleaving is auto. And then of course your channel sub timings, which is basically going to be your timings. Since I'm using XMP, I'm leaving everything at auto because it's going to go per my SPD. Now we can go to this tab here under voltage and we can go to our advanced power settings, CPU core voltage, chipset voltage, and DRAM voltage control. Basically the same thing. This is where you're going to go ahead and set your load line calibrations, your, your PWM phase control, all this stuff for your VRM so you can get a good thermal balance, you can get good you know, phase switching, etc. 
when you're when you're trying to uh, performance tune your tune your system. Again, drop downs and sliders. So we'll go ahead and close that. But if you look to the right, here's your load scaling, and this will show you what your load scaling is going to be. Also, CPU core voltage control. Basically, where your voltages are. You want to set your uh, V core voltage. You set it here. If you don't want to set it from that front front page, you could go to your I/O digital or analog voltage. Uh, Gigabyte has gone back to uh, the hybrid. Uh, VRM, which is both analog and digital, uh, something that I usually don't prefer, but it seems to be working fairly good on the Z87 system so far. Chipset voltage, PCH core and your PCH IO, and of course your DRAM voltage control. Set your DRAM. If you're trying to overclock your memory and you, or you want to just add some extra voltage to your memory, go ahead and do it. It's just giving you all the all the options that you could possibly have. Now your PC health status, basically, of course, you know, this is going to be your case open status, your CPU temperature warnings. This is what you want to set to where you want your system to warn you if you're hitting specific points. And of course your miscellaneous, your slot configuration and 3D Mark 01 boost. Have it disabled. We can enable it. And basically what it's going to do is going to enable legacy benchmark enhancements. So let's go back to frequency. Let's go to CPU upgrade and I will show you that. This is how you could auto performance tune your system based on your processor, based on your multiplier. You can go anywhere from 4.3 to 4.7 gigahertz. Gigabyte has put everything that they need, all the timings, all the settings, all the values in there, so one click, reboot. If your system can handle it, if your processor has, can handle that overclock, it's going to be able to do it based on just clicking on one of those settings. So now let's go ahead into system information. Of course, system information is system information. This is where you can set your password, you can set your resolution toggle you know for either HD or normal your background wallpaper go to classic setup your startup options your startup page home and performance you could change that to anything you want your display policy full HD first VGA first your working environment I have it set to startup in dashboard mode not in classic mode let's go over to the BIOS features BIOS features are basically your features for your boot up number lock, your full screen logo if you want to set fast boot on. You can set up your you know your USB support, how you want it to be set up. Of course, your virtualization technology and there's also Windows 8 features on here. This also will set up your secure boot, your secure boot mode, key management anything that you need in the BIOS that you want to go ahead and set. Under peripherals, of course, peripherals, your SATA controllers, your SATA mode selection. What do you have plugged in? Do I have something plugged into SATA port 0? Yes, I have my hard drive there. SATA port 1, I have my DVD, uh, my Blu-ray. Everything is hot plug and it'll show you exactly where and what is where is what is which on both the G SATA and the regular SATA device configuration basically this is going to tell you or ask you for if you want to turn on your your audio do you want to turn on the inf Intel graphics do you want legacy USB support etc you could also fix your gigabyte Ethernet network connection your, I mean your gigabit, I'm sorry, or your Marvel SATA controller configuration. By clicking this it'll bring you into classic mode and here you go, this is your NIC configuration. So let's go ahead, I'll hit F2, that's how you get back to dashboard mode and we're back in dashboard mode now. Marvel SATA, there you go. The Marvel SATA is your G SATA. What ports do you have populated in that? Super I.O. configuration, 
IO chip, or is it enabled or disabled? Power management. What does power management do? Power management is going to be your resumes, your wake on LAN, your soft off, your AC back, your power up on keyboard, power on by mouse. You set it, it will do what it wants you to do. And of course, last but not least, we have the save and exit. And under save and exit, we have a few different things. You have your save and exit, of course. You have your boot override, load and save profiles. So if you have an OC profile, if we just went in ahead and set something up that we want, we click, we go ahead and click save profile, save it under whatever name you want. So as you can see, profile one, whatever you want to save, and it'll save it. Load profiles, once we go to that, here you go. You could load your you could load your profiles. Q flash. Q flash is basically how you flash your BIOS. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put a you're gonna put a thumb drive into one of your USB ports with the BIOS file on it, go into Q flash, it'll automatically detect where it is, go ahead and click update and it'll run for you. You also have load and save custom settings. If you want to save some custom settings, you could do that here. Once you save them, if you want to load them, you click load, and there you are. So let's go ahead back to home. We'll click on classic setup here, and we'll take a look at the classic setup. Again, this is the classic setup as what you might know if you're one of your old, these older guys like me, who before, before UEFI BIOS came out, this is what we were used to seeing. Basically, it's just a more familiar setup. You have up on the top your MIT, your system information, your BIOS features, peripherals, power management, of course, save and exit. It's just a more familiar setup. So when I hit that right there, it's, of course, it's going to give me what, I'm, what are my cores set up to, what are my turbo ratios set up to, where are my frequencies at, what am I doing, what do I have set up right now. So we'll go ahead and click the back button and then we'll go down to advanced frequencies what's that going to give you it's going to give you the same thing as in dashboard mode but under a more familiar look i usually like to use the keyboard in here because it is a little bit sluggish in the classic mode i usually have to click a couple times in order to actually get the stuff to come up so i found that by go ahead and use my keyboard i could i could get through this a little bit quicker it has all the same settings, so if we go to system information, of course it's going to give you the same system information. Your BIOS features, it has the same BIOS features as in the dashboard, it's just in a more classic view. Peripherals, same thing for the peripherals. And then of course power management, and then save and exit. So let's go ahead back to dashboard mode, and again, this has been a guide and a quick overview of the Gigabyte UEFI Dual BIOS for the Gigabyte Z87 UD3H motherboard. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Of course, for the full review, visit us at hitechlegion.com. That's www.hitechlegion.com. H-I, not H-I-G-H, so it's H-I-T-E-C-H-L-E-G-I-O-N. Make sure you find us on Facebook and like us on Facebook. That'll be facebook.com front slash HTL reviews. Twitter, twitter.com front slash high tech legion. And of course, with over a thousand videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it at high tech legion, you might not have seen it at all. Have a great day, everyone. Stay thirsty, my friends. See you the next time. Bye-bye.